Guys, gals, welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review, where today we are back out on the 30 mile gravel road known as Roseboro. of this exploring adventure and I am excited to be back out here. The truck is loaded up with good food, I have some new gear, and together we are going to explore this area some more. I had so much fun on the previous trip and based upon the comments, so did you all. So I'm back out here again so that we can explore and find another awesome campsite. Now to start off with this episode, I thought I would answer some questions that I saw in the comment section for the first video. A lot of people wanted to know about this truck. This is a 2011 Toyota Tundra Rock Warrior TRD, Toyota Racing Development. The compressor that I mentioned is for the air ride suspension, which is by Firestone. The previous owner decked this truck out for hauling, towing, and whatnot. And I have to say it's pretty sweet because you can adjust this for firmness. Another question that I saw often was what about gas mileage? Terrible, let's see. This truck is getting 15.8 miles to the gallon, <laughs> which is pretty bad. The 2011 year and many other years had the smaller gas tank, so I have to fill up quite often. The range on this is right around 340 miles full. I saw a few comments in regards to face masks. Some people seem to be upset that I wore one. I don't get that at all. I believe that it's North Carolina state law that you have to wear one now. And if that's not the case, at least in the little towns that I was going through, it is. It's city law, so you have to have one. Otherwise, it's a class two misdemeanor, I believe. Rule number one about making YouTube videos is don't record yourself doing something illegal, like going shopping without your mask on in a place that requires it. <laughs> that's funny. There weren't many comments about wearing a mask, but there was a few, and I really don't get it. And if a mask can help in the least little bit, I say wear one. Of course, folks, do what you want to. Here at the channel, I will never tell you what to do. But for myself, I have no problem wearing a mask. Tell you what everybody i have to explore this road just a little bit more this is the road that has the cabin the fact that there aren't any no trespassing signs has really piqued my curiosity since i left this place so i parked there at the beginning of the road and i want to make a quick little trip down here to see where this goes the mystery has been solved it goes to a graveyard. Well, that was nice and easy. And now we know. <laughs> when you're running on old forest roads, it's pretty common, especially in this area, to find old cemeteries like this. I was thinking that maybe it went to like a beautiful campsite next to a creek or something. But nope, that's not the case. <laughs> on with the adventure it's funny for this one little community the road turns to pavement it's about a mile long and then it goes back to gravel
This looks to be Forest Road 451. Things have been shot here, there's no doubt about that. At some point in time, I would love to come back and explore these areas. And maybe this winter, we will. everybody we are right around the corner from the previous campsite before we get there I want to check something out I saw a trail over here on the right the last time when I was leaving and I wanted to go back and check it out so let's do that now with this trail I am going slow and I'm being careful because there are lots of rattlesnakes, copperheads, and there are a lot of ticks out this way. So this is a pretty interesting trail really. You can see how this just goes through the woods and goes out to a big opening. Now I can see that it's overgrown big time. So for right now it's of no interest to me, but this winter it could be a good place to camp. So that's an interesting trail. It's like a habitat area, a wildlife habitat area. And right over here is where I camped at last time. Let's go check it out real quick. More than anything, I'm curious to see if anybody's been out here. It would give me a good idea of just how busy this location is. And yeah, people have been here. So you all know, I camped here last week. So someone's come through, stayed the night. Now folks, we are on virgin territory. I've never been here. I have no idea where this goes. Hopefully we can find a really good campsite for ourselves. What do we, what do we have here? So I tell you what folks, this is a very nice campsite and you're right next to the wilderness area which we saw from that one forest road. This is fantastic. I mean this really is beautiful. Woo! I love this campsite. This is very, very nice. If we keep on exploring and don't find anything good, I'm coming back here. One thing that's really interesting about this area is that there are potential campsites all over the place. You can disperse camp anywhere you want to in the Pisgah National Forest. And as you're driving on this road, you will come across like trails that just venture off into the weeds. 
into the woods and they could lead to a campsite. It's one of those things where you have to get out and explore every single one. Now, that's not something that I'm going to do. I'm not going to explore all the sites. But the main ones I am marking on my GPS. It should be mentioned coming down into the Roseboro area in the summertime, you will find quite a bit of traffic. And you get about five miles down and there's a potential for a lot of people. And that's because people like to come down and play in the creek. But once you get past the bridge, it looks like the people thin out. Most people just turn around and go back the way they came. So we have another campsite here. Pretty nice, actually. The thing that I'm noticing about these campsites is that with some of them, they've at least been like renovated sort of thing. Like all of these rocks here, the dirt, that's freshly done. There's a trail that goes up here. There's another trail over here. I want to explore all of it, but there simply is not enough time. I'm definitely going to mark this on the GPS, but I'm going to keep going. Yeah, that's a cool spot right there. My favorite is that one back there. And it's basically next to where I camped at last time. This looks to be an old house here in the forest. And it looks like all sorts of bad things have happened to this place. This is more than an old shed. This used to be a house. There is black mold growing all over this place. Ooh, man. All the windows have been busted out. Most of the walls have been punched, kicked, ripped apart. I would go inside of this and explore around, but you would have to have a very good mask. The black mold in here is insane. Wow, this is wild. <laughs> it really is wild. I've spoken about this previously, but here in the mountains, you will find these old homesteads in the woods, just like this, everywhere. Very, very common. Very, very interesting, folks. I tell you, I would love to know the history of this place, but it would be very difficult to find it out.
That used to be an old dam and it's begun falling apart. Here's a big chunk of it. And you can see how the rocks have been stacked, the concrete on top and more rocks. That's pretty wild. Well, I'm sure you could camp back there without any issues. Obviously, other people have. But that is, without a doubt, private property. That house would not have been built on parkland, Pisca land, or anything like that. So, yeah, I'm moving on. Plus, I want to see what else I could find. This is the Edgemont area. And if I take a left, I believe that will take us to the location where I did the hot tent challenge. The campsite that was just full of garbage. It's that way. <laughs> okay, I am going to turn around, go back up and take that really good site and spend the night there. I really, really like that spot. Now, just in case you're wondering, everyone, this is the One Tigress folding chair. And I have a review on this, in case you want to see it. The table is aluminum and this is from Sportneer.
That coffee is done. And this is cowboy coffee. And what you do, you heat up some water, you put your grounds in, boil it for about five minutes. Then let it sit for a few minutes, throw in some cold water. And what the cold water does, it takes all the coffee grounds and forces them to the bottom of the pot or the kettle. Then you can dump out just pure, very smooth coffee. Now, some people think that this is gonna tear your guts up and that's actually not true. It is said that if you heat coffee at a lower temperature for a long period of time, it reduces the acid in the coffee. And I have found this to be true. My grandfather, he used to say that he didn't want any eggs in his coffee. And that's because some people would take eggshells and they would put them in their coffee grounds. It is said that eggshells will do the same thing as far as reducing the acidity of your coffee. I've even heard of some people putting an entire egg in their coffee pot. It is lunch time and coffee time. Cheers, my friends. At the moment, the weather is perfect. I don't think there's a dark cloud in the sky. Okay, so there are some storms to the west of us, but they are not coming this way. So as of right now, we are in good shape. This is the radar app that I use. It's called My Radar. There's a paid version, and this is the free one but it works pretty good. So we are that blue dot here in the corner. Everything's just going to the west. I'm having spaghetti for lunch, everyone. It looks pretty dry. <laughs> I don't think there's enough sauce on this. For myself, I like a very wet spaghetti. I don't like a dry spaghetti at all. That is so dry, in fact. I'm going to add just a little bit of water to it. That little bit of water will help bring this back to life. As far as the spaghetti goes, I say done. Good enough, hot enough. Now, I will put a little bit of water in this, warm it up, and it makes cleanup nice and easy. A little bit of seasoning here. Some garlic salt, some pepper. Bon appetit. Whew. I'll tell you folks, it is a warm day down here in the foothills. Some hot spaghetti will make it all better. <laughs> I should have just eaten it cold. What was I thinking? I don't know. It looks pretty good, it smells good. It really helped that I added some water to it and kind of spread that sauce around.
Let me tell you everybody, it is storming a little bit further off the mountain, big time. As I've been walking around looking for firewood, I've stumbled upon all sorts of bullet shells. Nine millimeter, Saw some 22 over here. And also, the trail that goes off into the woods there, there's toilet paper everywhere. And the strange thing is, there's tons and tons of underwear. I don't know why, I have no idea. Maybe people are getting drunk out here and crap in their pants, but there's underwear everywhere. <laughs> I've been busy since the last time I saw you. I got my bed ready for the night, and I even had enough time to research Roseboro, and I found the story about its creation, and it's pretty wild, actually. It's pretty wild. I will share that story with dinner. I tell you, the history of small little places like this is so interesting, and it all makes sense, and really explains why you have forest roads, just like this. Temperature-wise, pretty warm. High 80s, maybe 87, something like that. I was drenched with sweat when I got done sawing up all this wood. And I tell you, it makes me want to get an electric chainsaw. That is one of those pieces of equipment that I've wanted to get for my overlanding, but I wanted to wait until the technology was good enough. And I think we're probably at that point. What do you all think? Comment down below, share your thoughts. If you have any hands-on experience with electric chainsaws, battery-powered chainsaws, let me know down in the comment section what you all recommend. I personally have only used gas, and normally I go with steel, but something tells me that if they have, you know, battery-operated chainsaws, they are going to cost a fortune, so... That's not what I'm looking for. Ideally, 12-inch bar is what I want. Nothing more than that. For overlanding, you simply do not need anything more than that. I'm not logging out here, so I don't need anything bigger than 12 inches. And neither do you. 12 inches is plenty. <laughs> Anyways, folks, it is time for a beer. Whew. Cheers, my friends, cheers. It is still rocking and rolling over here. Just nonstop thunder. Time-wise, 6.30. Huh. It's later than I thought. This is a little piece of paradise. The only irritation are the flies. There's quite a few of them. No mosquitoes, though. I think I might get a uh, smoky fire going just to kind of clear them out. It's definitely way too hot for a fire though. 
I mean, it's got to be right around 90 degrees, and <laughs> for a mountain man, it's hot. I'm not used to it. All the bugs are now gone. And I'm kicking back, I'm drinking coffee and beer. Who doesn't drink both at the same time? <laughs> I hate you guts. <laughs> Shoo, come on, get out of here, move. <laughs> get out of here, man. That bumblebee has been hanging out with me the entire day. <laughs> Very inquisitive. At one point in time, when I was making lunch, I hear like this vibrating sound coming from the stove and I open up the gas compartment and that thing flies out of it. <laughs> This here is one of the new pieces of gear that I have to use for this adventure. I discovered this piece of equipment thanks to a viewer who recommended it. Thank you very much. You know who you are. You may have seen this before someplace else, or maybe this is new to you, but this is called the Ready Light. How cool is that? This thing is super bright. Check this out. Each one of these pods in the corner can be detached and they can also be hung up. They have included hangers on the backside. They can be used as flashlights. The unit has a solar panel on the backside. So you can charge the main light, the side lights, your cell phone, and so on. That is a very cool piece of gear. Now, I'm not sponsored by the company. I bought this with my own money. Let's see how well it performs. I will be testing this out for multiple months and I will pass on my verdict in the future. But so far, this is pretty cool. Thank you very much again to the viewer who suggested that I look into this. I do appreciate it. Well, I figured might as well go ahead and make dinner while I still have some light left. It will be dark here in just a minute. Now for dinner, grilled herb chicken, brown rice, grilled chicken, basil, pesto sauce, feta cheese, roasted tomatoes. Oh yeah. This is going to be awesome. I tell ya. That really, really smells good. 
As I mentioned earlier, I was able to find out the history of this area, the Roseboro area. It's beautiful and tragic at the same time, actually. It's a good story that has a bad ending. So let's go back in time, shall we? This area used to be known as Chicken Town. <laughs> Seriously, Chicken Town. And it was home to the Ritter Lumber Company. And with this logging company, it logged here in North Carolina, West Virginia, South Carolina, and Virginia. According to the history, there was a passing tradesman coming through town. And there were so many chickens for sale that he just jokingly gave the area the name Chicken Town. Well, the name stuck. And during the 1800s, the locals here, they didn't mind the name at all. Now, speaking of which, there were not very many people here, just a handful. And with the locals who were here, they were logging and they were also mining for gold. To get into town, there were two ways to go. You could walk on foot or you could ride a horse. That was it. It says here that there was no post office. There was no doctors, no nurses. There was no churches. But there was an old schoolhouse that wasn't in use. So around 1913, a woman came to town, and her name was Miss Kate Roseboro. And what she discovered was a town where very few people could read and write. By the time that she began teaching, things began to pick up in the town, so there were more people, more children. So she began teaching the children as well as the adults. There was night school three times a week. In addition to teaching, she would also help those who were sick. For four months, she taught school for children, for the adults, and helped others. And she would walk the trails everywhere she went. In the summer of 1916, Roseboro went home for a few weeks, and she traveled to Newland, she boarded a train, and before returning home, she went to visit her brother, and when she was crossing the street, she was hit by an automobile and killed. When the residents of Chickatown heard about this, they decided to name the town after her, Roseboro, and they did this in her honor. And folks, that is how Roseboro got its name. How about that? As I said, it was good and bad at the same time. It's because of that lumber company and the logging operations that we have these forest roads. Isn't that interesting? The history of the mountains here is a story of men and women struggling to survive. And all they wanted was freedom. They wanted to be left alone. And they didn't mind living in the middle of nowhere, living off of the land in these small communities that were basically unreachable by outside communities. I tell you what, everybody, it has been an awesome evening. I sat next to the fire for hours, listened to the whippoorwills, and watched the fireflies, or lightning bugs, whatever you want to call them. It was a nice night. It really was. It's late. It's around 11.30. <laughs> I've been out there for a while. Yeah. This really is a nice campsite. It's a shame that humanity ruins things, throws trash everywhere, but that's how it goes, I guess. My plan now is basically to kick back, relax. I have a couple of movies on my phone. I doubt I'll watch much, but I have a movie called 7500. Not sure what that's about, some sort of uh, terrorist attack on an airplane or something, maybe. All right, everybody. Good night for now. See you all in the morning. Good morning, everybody. 
I'll tell you what. It's been a good night. It's been peaceful, quiet. And about five minutes ago, it started raining. It was just a quick shower, not enough to even wet anything. So I took a look at the radar, and there's a whole line of storms coming this direction. So, <laughs> I guess it's time to get up. I guess it's time to get up. I guess because of the weather, I shouldn't waste too much time. So, let's get out of here, everybody. Let's go make some coffee and breakfast. As it stands right now, it is raining. <laughs> All I see is blue sky above me, but it is raining. Cheers everyone, cheers. It's time to get the morning off right. It's good and hot. Breakfast this morning is French toast made from raisin bread. When it comes to the world's best French toast, you have to warm up the syrup. Warm syrup makes all the difference. And now we are ready. Woo! This looks amazing. It smells really good too. That is unreal. <laughs> the plan for today have breakfast, pack up, and then it's time to get out of here. It's warming up. It's getting hot. <laughs> I'd say right now it's about 81 degrees. It's, it's hot. Humidity about 100% and there's storms on the way. Gosh, that is awesome. <laughs> mm -hmm. Before this episode ends, I want to talk about the fridge that I have in the truck. I purchased the Dometic 28 liter. I'll flash the official title on the screen for you. But um, for myself and my adventures, the 28 liter is the perfect size. And also, it wasn't terribly expensive. It's pricey, don't get me wrong, but compared to what's out there, it's not bad. 28 liters doesn't sound like a whole lot of space, 
but if you take your food out of its packaging, you could fit a ton in there. That is a fridge freezer unit, and it seems like it is power efficient. It's been running on battery since about three o'clock yesterday, and I'll show you what we're at as far as levels go. As far as my setup goes, the fridge is connected to the Jackery. The Jackery is connected to the truck, and this is a 1,000 watt hour Jackery. As soon as I fire on the truck, this starts charging, continues to run this, and this will be at 100% in no time. It is now 9.30. So from three o'clock yesterday, 9.30 today, 33% power usage. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. I did a search for these type of fridges on YouTube and there are so few real reviews. Most of them are people who have like opened the box and they're like, yeah, this is super awesome. You should definitely get one. Most of them haven't even plugged it in before. <laughs> Isn't that funny? And that's how it works with most overlanding gear. I'm going to change that. I promise. Real reviews are coming. One thing that I promise never to do is have a sponsorship on this channel. I personally value my time more than anything else. And I value yours. So I'm not going to waste it spilling out a bunch of garbage for some other company. Anytime that I'm watching a video and someone starts rattling off about Squarespace or Epic Sound or something like that, it wastes my time and I get irritated. I look at that as disrespectful on many levels and I promise never to do that. And let me tell you, I could have. <laughs> as far as gear review channels go, this is one of the largest for the outdoor space. And I've been approached by every company you can imagine. I simply will not do that, folks. I have way too much respect for you. It is heating up. This is a beautiful spot, and I've enjoyed this adventure. But it's time to go. This adventure is now over, my friends, and it has been fantastic. Thank you so much for joining me for this trip. I want you all to know that I appreciate every single person, every viewer, and together we will continue to explore the back roads. Until I see you again, take care, strength and honor, be safe.